Welcome to Safe and Sound Support Videos brought to you by Safe and Sound Creative Technologies in Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, today I'm going to show you about our interactive website that we provide for our customers for our Interlogic systems. So the first thing you need to do is you need to go to our website at safeandsound.com. And once you get to our home page, if you look at the top left, um, customer login is where you're going to need to go next. And then you can scroll down to customer login. You type in your username and password and then hit login. All right. So this is your main screen. Um, if you notice, we have the security tab selected. So this is what I'm going to be talking to you about uh, is the interactive between like arming and disarming your security system. And also you have your sensor status and also history. Um, if you look on your keypad, you do have history in your settings. So what this does, it shows, you know, also it shows if you somebody's logged in uh, recently, it shows a successful or even a failed login attempt. So somebody's trying to get into your account, they're not supposed to. Um, also, you can see uh, commands being sent, uh, what time and what day they were sent. And also you can see when sensors were tripped. So, so one neat feature you can do on your account is you can uh, monitor up to 10 different sensors on your system. So if you go to security and then go to sensors, what this should show is all your sensors on your system. And uh, here you can even give them uh, certain names if you'd like to change their names. And also on the right side, the ones that are checked are the ones that you're monitoring the activity of. So if I go back to my system summary, right here it shows that zone 4 has been activated or front door and back door are open and uh, all the other the other zones are closed so you can monitor all those devices and see when they're being tripped or when they're left open or if they're all closed so this is one cool feature when you're trying to arm the system if you want to arm it away from in your away from the house if you see that something's open that means that that definitely needs to be closed before arming the system so that would actually give, make a, give you a problem So next what you have is the arming feature. You see that you have your two modes, your stay and away. So that's if you if you select So if you select stay that means it's doors and windows only and if you select away that means it arms the whole system including the motion detectors. And also you have a disarm command. So let's say you need to let somebody in your house and you're not you know at your house, you're at work or even, you know, out of the state you can come here, you can hit disarm, and it sends a signal to your system letting it know it needs to disarm. So the next feature you have is users. So right here what you can do is you can add, if you go to actions, add users. You can even show the user code. So if you don't know whose code is what, you can go here and show user codes. Um, you can add a user. You can even, even add a temporary user. So let's say you're going to be out of town for a week. You can give a user access to your system for only a short period of time. So let's say I want it from the 5th to the 8th. I give them a name. You can even add contact information. So if you want to add email and uh, phone number and the next feature you have is your access control so right here if you select if you click on the icon you can grant access to someone giving them a four digit user code and then hit save so now you see we successfully created a user four um, if you notice the icon the side security system is a little calendar that means that they're, they're a temporary user so their user code will only work for a certain time that you give them and also you give them a four digit user code so if you want to know what the user code is remember you can go to actions and hit show user codes and it shows all the user codes um, on this system this is an NX8 V2 system it supports up to 99 security panel access codes if you have a Simon XTI system it only supports up to eight different user codes so the next thing I'll talk to you about is your interactive with your lighting and your door lock it's under the empower tab so right here we see we have a light dimmer on this system 
under lights. So let's go next to rules under empower. So let's first start with the event triggered rules. So we want to add a rule. So right here, let's click on add a rule. So the first thing we need to do is give the rule a name. So on this system, we only have one dimmer on the system. So I'm going to give it the name dimmer. And then we get to choose the event. So the event trigger rule means that if any of these happen, so let's say alarm or you arm or disarm the system or maybe a sensor trips or even the geo services, if you cross a geo fence, I'll show you that later, what that is. So you choose one of these options. So what I'm going to do is say, I want this dimmer to turn on whenever I arm or disarm the system. So right here is where you select the event you want the light to turn on with. So I want the light to turn on when the panel is disarmed. So let's say I'm coming in the house, I can disarm it from my phone or use my key fob or even come in through a door and disarm it from the panel. So as soon as I disarm the system, the light will turn on for me. So the next one is you can set it up to where if the panel's disarmed, do I want it to turn the light on at uh, any point in time? So let's say it's like late at night and I really don't want the light to turn on. I can go to only during the following time to give it, you know, certain days of the week and what time it is. Or I can just select at all times and if the system is disarmed period, then this light will turn on for me. So this is the action. So you can select turn on, turn off, or dim. So I, what I wanted to do with this light is I want it to turn on if the system's disarmed at any time. So you can also give it a time limit. So let's say I disarm the system, the light comes on, but I only want the system, but I only want the light to stay on for maybe a minute. So I can come here and select one minute before turning off. So then the next option is select devices. So like I said, there is only one dimmer on this system. So I can come here and select dimmer and then hit save. So now you see we have successfully created a rule for event triggered rules uh, for the dimmer. If the panel is disarmed at any time, turn on the light dimmer. So right here, let's say you create multiple rules and you don't want them turned on at a certain time. So let's say only when you're at the house, uh, you want this, the rule to be active, but let's say you're out on vacation and you disarm the system, you don't want the light to uh, turn on. So right here you can click the active button and now it's pause. So at any point you disarm the system from now on, this rule is never going to be active. So I'm going to turn this rule back on. And also, let's say you wanted to change it to where the dimmer, you know, I want it to turn on the light, but I want it to stay on. I don't want it to turn off after a minute. So you can actually edit this one rule right here. Let's go about to edit right here and go down and come to select devices for a minute and go indefinitely and then hit save. So now you've updated your rule. So now let's go to scheduled automation. All right. This is really great for your like your thermostats. Um, you can even do it to, for for your outside lights, which is a really good cool feature. So if you do have lights outside and the dimmers are connected to those lights, you can set it up to where maybe you know a certain time a day, like late at night, you can have the lights turn on automatically for you. Um, the thermostats. What's really cool about that is you can set it up to where if you have a set schedule every day, you can go in and say okay. I know I'm not going to be home at this time or I'm going to leave it in the house at this time. So let's turn the air conditioner uh, down uh, at this certain point and turn it up at this certain point. So you can go here to add a schedule. So after giving your rule a name and selecting which devices you want to be with this rule, you next choose which days you want the rule to be active. So I want this rule to be active on every day of the week. So now I choose what I want to happen. So with this dimmer, I want this light to turn on at sunset. So right here you can choose turn on, turn off, or dim. So I want it to turn on at sunset and exactly at sunset. 
And also, I want this to turn off one hour after sunset. So right here you see the next option, you can do leave on or turn off. You can click sunset, and then you have options of time before and time after. So I select one hour after. And this last option, don't worry about that. Um, just make sure you get the name and the devices and the days of the week and this rule right here. So come down to hit save. So now you see that we successfully added the scheduled rule. So we, and again, if you want that to be inactive, you can click on active and it shows pause. So, so from now on, this rule will not work until I click on pause to switch it to active. Our next option is devices. So this is if you want to give your devices a certain name, uh, you can give you know every device on your system a name to you know distinguish between each if you'd like to. So I'm gonna give it a name, lamp dimmer, and hit save. So the next thing I'm gonna to talk to you about is the geo services. So click on mobile, and uh, one thing you need to remember to do is to log into the app on your phone. I'll, be, I'll show you that in another, another video so you can check it out if you don't know how to enable it. But if you have it enabled, um, you come to mobile and geo services. So what you see here is a bubble uh, around your house. Uh, what this is is a two mile bubble around your house. So let's say that if I want it to remind me to arm my system if I leave this bubble if I've not armed my system. So let's say I'm leaving the house and I get, get out of this two mile bubble, um, it's going to send me a message saying that I have not armed my system if I have not done so. So one thing you can do, you can even edit this geofence is what they're called. You can add more. So what I want to do is I want to edit this geofence. I want to change it from the default two miles to one mile. One mile is the lowest you can have. Um, and if you'd like to, you can even enter a certain address you can give it a new name, click save. So to add a fence, so let's say I want this to be um, at a certain address. So you type in the address, it moves it to that certain location, you give it another name, you choose how large you want the fence to be. So what I've heard of people doing before, if like you want to have your kids, uh, if they have cell phones, you can have them on the system to where if they're leaving the, the school or something like that, you can see when they're leaving school. Um, so you can put this bubble around the school and it notifies you when they're leaving the school. Um, you can hit save. So now you see there's two bubbles that we created. So what I want to do, I want to first create a reminder right here, arming a reminder. This is for if I'm leaving my house and I forget to arm my system and I leave that one mile bubble, it's going to notify me. So I want to put a arming reminder I'm going to give it a name so right here you can do a specific time so a certain time of the day if you think that the system should be armed at a certain time of the day then you can select a time but what I'm going to do is I'm going to select um, when I leave my home bubble at any time I'm going to say at all times. So right here you can choose what days to remind you of. So let's say like during the week you want to arm, but maybe the weekend you don't. Uh, but I want it at all times. So here we can add a recipient. So right there we have uh, an email. So you can have it to send an email if you like to, or you can even add uh, new contacts. You can give it a, a mobile number, your email, and add the contact. And uh, so then it will notify you, you know, whichever way you want it to, by text message or even by email. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select our email and say the notification. So now that we've created the arming reminder, it's automatically taking us to the notifications tab. So here you can edit your notifications if you'd like to turn certain ones on or certain ones off. You can choose it right here. You can even edit those notifications. So. Here's my first arming reminder that I did, I did create earlier, so it's going to not, notify me by email if I leave that home uh, bubble and have it on my system.
So let's go back to the geo services and talk a little bit more about the three other options we have. Uh, sensor reminders. So let's say you're leaving this bubble and your front door is open. Uh, what you can do, you can set it up to where uh, it sends you a text message or email saying that your front door is open. So you can easily turn around uh, since you're not really far from the house to close that door. Or even you can set it up to where if the door is open for a certain amount of time, they'll say the door's been open for five minutes, notify me. So you can be in the house or wherever around the house and have the door. Uh, st if the door is staying open, then you get a notification, hey, you know, you left your door open. Uh, the next one is a uh, pause video recording. So you can choose to where if you're leaving the house or coming into the house or whatever, you can have your video stop recording. And also you have your light automation rules. So this is a really neat uh, feature. Um, if it's not time uh, or it's you know, slightly dark outside and you have lights on the system that are set up outside, uh, you can set it up to where if you enter this bubble, turn on the lights. And our last really neat option is our lost device option. So most of the time what people do is when they log in on their app, apps on their phones, that they have it to where it automatically logs them in every time they click on the app instead of you know typing in your password every time you log in. Um, right here what you can do is you can set it up to where if I lost my phone I, come, I can come to here and hit submit and it will lock out all the apps so no longer if somebody has your phone and they click in the app, they cannot arm and disarm your system or even look at the, at the video or turn on your lights. So right here you can choose you know, what device it is that you want to lock out and hit submit and it will lock out your devices. Well thanks for watching guys. Uh, check out more videos on our website at safeandsound.com and please subscribe to our YouTube channel.